You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, and Eric here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter the Gaming Drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Devon's Path. So, y'all, before we jump into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. <sighs> and if my voice sounds a little weird or a little deeper, it's because I'm a little bit sick right now. I'm, I'm getting better, but uh, yeah, so that, that's why my, my voice sound might sound a little bit off. Anyway, I'm not sure. Supposedly, it's a pretty well known one. It was directed by Warner. Warner, come on. Warner Hedgehog, really? Oh, Warner Hedgehog. I think he's a popular German director. Oh, yeah, here's a little thing. Um, if any of. Uh, so. Obviously, that dude is based off of Warner Herzog, who is a really interesting uh, German director. And one of my favorite movies that he's made is Incident at Loch Ness. Don't look up anything about it, just watch it. It's a lot of fun. Alright. <clears throat> Maybe. I don't watch films much. It's not weird that I haven't heard about one. I've heard the name somewhere, though. How about you? Do you watch films? I like going to movies. There's something nice in the whole experience. It's different from watching at home. Huge screen and lack of distractions can really transport you to a different place. I didn't have many occasions after moving here. I don't know which cinemas play with play with English subtitles. Ah, oh, yeah, that is a problem. I haven't thought about it, but then I wasn't in the cinema here yet, either. What's your favorite film? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. There are many I like. It depends on the mood too much. Besides, I don't think it's fair to fair to compare action movies and psychological dramas and fantasy epics. I couldn't, couldn't decide on one. Scandinavian cinema is quite strong. Some of the films I've watched were superb. Too bad it's not well known, at least in the U.S. <clears throat> and you? Oh, I don't know. Uh, as I said, I don't watch films too often. I'm more of a books or music guy. I've been thinking about what you told what you told me about approaching music on its own terms. It's a really useful mindset. I've never thought about it like that before. It is especially if you're trying to get get into something from a genre you don't usually listen to. Playing something in the background a few times helps to get a familiar helps to get you familiar with music too. I suppose that's why people love listening to soundtracks so much. Talking to him, I barely registered that I finished the whole plate. Setting it aside, I leaned back on the table, listening. It's such a joy to sit here with him and talk together. A few days ago, I would have never bet that could happen, and frankly, it barely feels possible now. Oh, I think it's time. Go take a spot on the blanket. I'll start the film. I nod, getting off the table. You're staying here? <clears throat> yeah, I'll watch from the back. I don't want to block the view. Taking the half-empty bottle with me, I walk away into the blanket strewn across the floor, looking for familiar faces. There's Lake, sitting with Torolf. There's Jorgen, chatting with an ewe I don't know. And there's also Miko, and I naturally gravitate towards him. Pause, leading me to the empty space next to him. Oh, hey, how'd it go? He agreed, or rather said we'll see tomorrow, but he seemed to be enthusiastic about it. Nice, you two have really have a connection, don't you? The light darkens suddenly and the film starts. Next to me, Miko straightens up, a spark of recognition lighting up in his eye. <clears throat> Project? Ah, so it is a well-known film. And only I didn't know it. Is it nice? I don't know. I've only heard of it. But it's Hedgehog. It, but it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be light. Miko shushes me, so I lean back to lean back to and start watching. <sighs> Clatter and bang. Mechanical world, forever repeating same motions it was programmed to. Absurd. Credits, finally. But the images stay in my head. Hey, Earth the Carvin! <laughs> Still half immersed in the film's world, one paw standing there, another on this soft blanket draped over, over a cold wooden floor. I look at Miko, puzzled. Hmm? It's over already. You can get up. Ah, right. My joints crack one by one as I get up, stretching my limbs. How'd you like the film? Well, f it, for sure it wasn't what I expected. And I don't th I don't think Devin expected this either. <clears throat> wasn't it supposed to be a comedy? I think it was, at least in part, but it was mostly a tragedy, yeah. I don't think I agree with it, though. It's a shame we didn't have a discussion panel or something like this planned for after the screening. I, I don't know what to think yet. I have to process what I've just seen first. Well, the film stripped the characters from choices, uh, stuck with stuck with themselves. Everything that happened to them felt predetermined, as if they were fighting not themselves, but some fate bestowed upon them. But I think choices are meaningful. I have to believe so. Otherwise, what's the point of choosing anything instead of lying flat on the ground? 
The outcomes of the choices aren't determined by us. They are shaping our lives, but they don't put us behind the steering wheel. We can't be in control of everything. But I wouldn't go into such extreme pessimism on the, as the film. I believe people can grow and change. I think we both did, and we don't have to repeat the past. I think I'll finish the day and go to my room now. If you'd like to talk or anything, I'll still be on my phone for a while. Thank you, and good night for now. The wolf walks away, heavy door of the cafeteria closing behind him without a sound that I expected. Perhaps fittingly, his absence here being a sudden silence, disorienting and unnerving. <clears throat> I'm left standing here alone. The room slowly emptied in the meantime, just a handful of students staying here to chat. I glance back at the projector, just in time to see Devin close the laptop, putting on his jacket and heading to the door outside to the terrace. Last notes of the closing song still plays in the speaker. Even if the projector is turned off, the black lens is like an empty eye. Standing outside, Devin stares at the moon, high up above the mountains, his paw feeling his pocket, as if he was looking for a pack of cigarettes that wasn't there. Does he even smoke? I don't think so. It wouldn't suit him. He's been kind of absent since we came back from town. Even when we talked before the film, it seemed as if his thoughts were elsewhere. I thought he was just busy, but now it's obvious to me that there's something eating him. Second now, coffee time. I know that when I've been sick before, some of you have commented that my voice sounded sexier, so thank you for that. I guess this is the very slight, I guess this is the very light sexy Naroon phase that, we're go that, uh, that I'm going through right now, so. <sighs> I guess it's like in Friends when Phoebe got sick and her voice became like deeper and sexier. Sickness equals sexy. <laughs> I follow the panther outside, the cold air of the arctic night biting at my face. It's chilling and refreshing, grounding me back in reality. Devon doesn't move, a dark silhouette against the backdrop of the snowy mountains, clouds of his condensed breaths billowing and disappearing in the darkness above. For a moment I consider going back inside, leaving him here alone, but I'd at least like to say at least like to say goodnight before going to bed. Each step unsure, I walk up to my pan to the panther, to my panther, to the panther, my heart stuck somewhere in my throat. Hey! Garvin, evening. I'm sorry for the movie. I should have read a bit more about it before choosing it. That happens. Uh, honestly, maybe it's better we've watched this instead of some action film. At least this one I'm definitely going to remember. What did you think of it? It was striking, but also so fatalistic. Honestly, I don't think I'd recommend it to anyone. <clears throat> oh, it was so heavy. I thought it was supposed to be a comedy. I feel bad about it. Sorry. I'm not disturbing, am I? No, don't worry. It's a gorgeous night, isn't it? It is indeed. Being out here in the mountains, with the sea just behind me, feels nothing short of incredible. I could stand here like Devon for hours and take in the landscape with its rough mountains and naked peaks, with the moon shining bright like a lighthouse, be beaconing us to walk through the forest as far as our legs would take us. Yeah, I never knew this part of the country was so beautiful. I hoped it would be. When I looked for photos from Norway, it was mostly places like this, like this one that I've seen in search results. I was a bit underwhelmed when I arrived in Anslo. The city itself is nice, though, and the fjords on the west coast are only a few hours away by train. At least I've heard so. I haven't been there yet. That's a nice prospect, though I never had good experiences with trains. It can be a little unreliable sometimes, but here they're also comfortable and convenient. I bet. Maybe I should take one somewhere once we're back. There's a lot There's a lot to explore in the whole country. I haven't seen anything other than here in Anzlo yet, though. But I'm glad I'm living here. I like the ocean, and I like... And I like cosmopolitan feel that Anslow has. I'm still not sure what to think about the country. It's beautiful out here, but I still don't know. I haven't fallen in love with it yet. Oh, I thought you liked it here. I do. It's a step up in many ways, though when it comes to the beauty of nature of the U, the nature of the U.S. doesn't have anything to be ashamed of, and Canada, with its mountains and streams, wasn't too far either. But I haven't made my home here yet. I don't really have friends. I have to rely on Rune if I want to go out or meet up with someone. And he has his own life. I've read half a dozen books since coming here, more than I usually read in a year. An immigrant's life isn't easy, not at first. I know something about that too. My only two friends here are Finnish as well. There's a certain barrier that's hard to overcome. Second now. You moved here in the summer, right? Yeah, in July. That's four months here. Not that much yet. Things could still change. I know. But I don't know how to make that change happen. I thought I was moving forward, but now I feel like I've reached a fjord and I'm just treading one around in one place. Why the sudden doubts? I thought you were happy with the move. 
Nevin sighs, looking back at the guest house. Half the lights are on, making the wooden house look like a lantern, a safe haven in the dark of the wilderness. The panther looks like he's battling with himself, unsure of what to say, or maybe how much his brows furrowed. Just normal doubts. Moving abroad is a huge decision. But you already moved here. Is something wrong? You seem a bit absent today. I hope this isn't about me. I doubt it, but there's still a possibility, and it's eating me up. Finally, he straightens up, his face relaxed before tensing up again. I got a message from my ex. He said breaking up was a mistake and asked me to come back and move in with him. But you tried and broke up already. Uh, and you said you never liked it back there. He broke up with me. I have no words. I feel like the ground has opened up around me, gaping earth swallowing me whole. I just wanted to tell you. I don't know if I'm considering it yet. We've renewed contact barely a month ago and I already have my job here. But it got me thinking about coming back. Coming back? I would just be giving up and after just a few months. And I wouldn't meet him ever again. It just seems like an awful idea. He left for a reason, and now he would go back to square one. I can't help but feel like I don't belong here. I moved here hoping it would solve all my problems, but I took most of them with me. I can't press him to stay. I don't even feel like I should ask about the messages or his ex. These things are way too private to prod. What can I do? You're in a country where like 15% of the people are immigrants. Everyone belongs here. Thank you. I'm happy you think so. Still, I need to think. I'm not making any decisions just like that, on the spot. And thank you, too, for talking with me. I hope to catch Rune to get things off my chest, but he disappeared somewhere. So, thank you for listening to my ramblings. Honestly, I feel a bit stupid. It should work the other way. I should be there for you. I'll get us the tickets to the Philharmonic tomorrow, okay? It's my treat. You don't have to. I can pay for myself. It's no problem. It's no problem for me, either. By the way, how about we move back inside? I can see you're cold. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. We make our way back to the warm guest house, sweet smell of cake still permeating the cafeteria, cozy and uplifting in combination with the dimmed lights. Devin takes off his jacket, throwing it onto one of the tables before diving under the table, re-emerging with a bottle of beer. I thought some beer after the movie would be nice. I only have one, though. You want to share it? I nod readily. Some beer would be nice indeed. It feels like a natural companion to an evening like this. We sit on the table again, panoramic windows before us, the world outside like a painting. Wait, you're above legal drinking age, aren't you? Legal age here is 18. I can be trusted with a beer. Besides, half a bottle? Even I would barely feel it. Right, so can't get used to it. Aren't American kids stuck at home in the suburbia for most of their childhood? We were walking to school myself since the first grade of primary school. I'd say we start being responsible beings a bit earlier. Devin opens the bottle with a Swiss knife he kept in his pocket and hands it to me. I take a swig without thinking. I thought I'd go fetch his glasses. Ah, sorry, I thought you wanted to take a sip. I just hold it. But if you don't mind, I don't mind either. Devin takes the bottle from me, pressing it to his lips and taking a big gulp, drinking at least thrice of what I did. I glance at the label. It's an unusual beer. I think the most popular brand in the country. It tasted bitter, but drinkable. Just like normal beer. Incredible how quickly and easily some company puts him in a good mood. He really must be feeling lonely here. It wouldn't have to be, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have to be better back in the U.S., the voice at the back of my head says. And I'm right here. Is it true what people say about the beer in the U.S. that it's canned piss? Not literally, no, it, but it's just bland. Even the standard corporate beer here is better. But at the same time, the U.S. has the best craft breweries in the world. So we both we have both the ends of the scale. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. I hear that Germany has some of the best craft breweries in the world, not the U.S. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Kate Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our Gold Tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye